Welcome to the BT Sport Boxing Show. I'm Adam Catterall. It's a pleasure once again to be in your company. We have got an action-packed 30 minutes lined up for you where you're going to be hearing from the former WBO heavyweight champion Joseph Parker. The UFC president, Dana White, is going to be joining us to give his thoughts on the current state of boxing and then reacting off the back of that and looking ahead to this weekend's action, Frank Warren will be here too. As ever, my partner in crime for the next 30 minutes, giving his insight into the world of boxing. It's quite a prominent week for him and uh, Josh Taylor. It is, of course, the one and only Mr. Ben Davidson. How are you, mate? You good? I'm good, thanks, Adam. You? Very well indeed, man. Busy week. Good, good. Busy, busy good. week, fight week, isn't it? I mean, obviously, this is the start of fight week. What's what's the emotions like ahead of a big one on Saturday for Josh? Yeah, Josh, he's got quite a uh, cool character about it. Um, he's very relaxed. I think he feels at home um, when he's in the ring and the fight week and that. He's done it plenty of times now on some big occasions, so... He's, he's used to it now, you know. We'll get um, Frank Warren's thoughts on the fight this weekend and upcoming shows uh, from him. We're going to be speaking to Dana White, the UFC president too, but we've got uh, the former WBO heavyweight champion, Joseph Parker, joining us in a minute. Listen, just before he gets on, Ben, I know that you've obviously spent some time in Joseph's company whilst you guys were out in Vegas, obviously training for various fights that Tyson Fury were involved in. I know that you've all become really good mates. You've seen him absolutely dominating social media during this lockdown, pal. Did you know that he always had it in his locker, <laughs> that he always had them moves knocking about? Uh, I didn't know he had those moves talking about, but I knew that he was a character, uh, you know, great guy, really get on with him and his team. And uh, it was good to see him keeping himself relevant in other ways during lockdown. No, he's been absolutely superb. And without any further ado, let's get to it. Here he is joining us, linking up from New Zealand, the former WBR heavyweight champion of the world and new brand spanking new king of the internet, Mr. Joseph Parker. How are you, sir? You good? I am fantastic. I'm doing good. Um, everything's good here in New Zealand. Family's safe and healthy. I think we are, uh, New Zealand's pretty much back to normal, nearly. So uh, everything, everything's very good here. Thanks. Listen, we're going we're gonna to talk boxing in a minute, but Ben's just been giving me a little bit of insight to them yeah. camps that you had uh, in Vegas. You guys obviously formed a little bit of a bond out there, had some good times. He's a little bit surprised that he hasn't been invited into one of your uh, social media videos, aren't you, Ben? You know what I mean? You, you were expecting the call, maybe, I don't know, maybe to play Danny Zuko or something. <laughs> yeah, I, did, but, I, did send, uh, I, did, I sent a request through, but he didn't, I did, he didn't uh, reply. The fee wasn't high enough. It was a low ball offer. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you've got to talk about those videos, mate, because they absolutely caught fire. Um, talk to me about how it all started. Is it your idea? Have you got somebody in the family that was helping you out? Because some of the ideas were unbelievable. Yeah, so I'm saying the, the cam my cameraman who was in my bubble, we decided he would be my bubble and he helped with the, the um, groceries and he helped with family stuff that we needed. And he actually is the man behind the camera, the man that does all the editing and the man behind the ideas. Uh, listen, some of those movies that I've done, I haven't even seen. And so the first one was the love, the love actually, you know, love actually because... Uh, we could, we wanted to show everyone that even though you're stuck at home, you can have fun, you know, yeah. dancing around um, with the family, you know, spa pool and all of that. You know, to lift spirits because everyone else is doing serious messages. And then from there, I think the feedback and the reactions made us continue to do more and more. And then like now, I think I'm not going to stop until I get an acting role somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys help me with a contract? Mate, Ben, you need to sort him out, get him into Hollywood. Part. You can we'll take try. your part if you give me a, if you give me a deal. We'll try, but I think you need to reveal this man that gave you the ideas. His name is Kerry Russell, and he he is the magician. I call him the magician because just because he's, you know, he's done the Step Brothers one, and the, and the one in the car, yeah, uh, Back to the Future, which I haven't seen all these movies. I think, I think You've I've not, only I seen. Know, wait a minute! Wait a minute! You've not seen Back to the Future or Step Brothers? I it's on my list. I am going to watch it. I am going to watch it. And Step Brothers, I will watch it. <laughs> You've never watched Step Brothers. I think I've seen maybe a little bit of it, but I can't. I can't really recall. Maybe I've been punching the head to me. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the anchor uh, anchorman one is the one for me, mate. You must have seen that because the timing on the song, the way that you've managed to time it with all the little nuances from Will Ferrell and the rest of the gang, is absolutely outstanding. I'll tell you that was probably the easiest one we did. Yeah, um, I was so happy that I had like I looked, walked into my room. I was like, oh, I got the wardrobe. And then I, you know, the, the, the thing that we did in that one was like, I did the one with the goatee, then I shaved, 
here and then I shaved clean shaven and yet like he had to, you know, the guy Kerry Russell just the magician behind the bat with the camera so credit to him what did what was the kids reaction because they've starred in some of these so you've had your kids in there the missus is in there as well Talk to, talk to me about them getting involved in this as well, man, because some of their acting is absolutely right up there. I think it's a family thing. You could do you could do some type of family movie. Uh, I think, yeah, like I said, once you give me the contract, I will give you your share, your percentage, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. But the family enjoyed it because there was nothing else to do. I was like, hey, kids, do you want to be in daddy's video? And they were like, no, no, no. Okay, I'll give you a little treat later, a little chocolate. And they were like, okay, okay, daddy. And then the missus just like, she had enough of seeing me do all this stuff. She was like, okay, whatever, I'll just join in. So I was like, this is the best family time I've ever had. <laughs> Brilliant. Exactly. Listen, Ben, you, you're slacking, son. You've got to up that social media game, pal. You need to get yourself a little video editor. Get Actually, to... Yeah, Ben, I'll get you into the next one if you want. <laughs> I, got, I think it's... I'll think it's... of the role for you, a specific role of the bad man. <laughs> We'll work it out. We'll work it out. But no okay. more low ball offers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's talk about boxing because you guys have obviously spent a bit of time together out in Vegas. Ben, I'll come to you first on this. Talk to me about the work that and, and the relationship and you with you guys coming together over in Vegas and the work that uh, Joseph did in preparation for a lot of Tyson's fights. Yeah, obviously, Joseph and Tyson already had a good relationship. So when we was over there, you know, I was speaking to... Um, speaking to Taylor and uh, we organised it to spend a day in the gym together, a couple of days I think we ended up having. And um, yeah, it was nice. It's nice to break training up when you're constantly doing the same thing over and over in, in a training camp. It, it can become monotonous and there's times for that, but there's also times for to change things up, a change of scenery. Um, we went to their gym, they popped over to the top-ranked gym. Um, Tyson spent some time doing a little bit of work with Kevin. I'd done a little bit of work with Joe uh, and it was great. It was good to, to have a little change, change things up a little bit and keep things fresh. And how did you find? Was I, was I easy to work with? <laughs> easy to work with, but I've actually got something to, something to, so next time I saw the first camp, we done a bit of work. Then the next time I asked Joseph what it was that I pointed out to him and he'd forgot. So I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is uh, this is uh, no way. <laughs> He's stitching you up, mate. He's stitching you He's up. He's stitching me up. No, you, you know, you were showing me, like, you know, all those moves. Was, yeah, but there was a tendency that you had that I told you about and you forgot it. We'll talk off camera next time. Okay, I need I need a reminder. See, <laughs> it's because he's it's because he's been dancing too much. Who's the better dancer, Tyson Fury or uh, Joseph Parker? Who do you recommend? Oh, oh, that's a close one. I'll tell you what, it'd be a lethal, lethal dance off. Yeah, it should be, man. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Like the, do you remember the Stifler dance off from American Pie Joe? Maybe that's what you can do. You and Tyson, Ben can be the referee in that. Oh, mate, you've got it nailed. That's the next video. <laughs> I reckon it'll be a great dance off, but I also reckon we'll be the best tag team dancing partner. Oh, it would be. Oh, but definitely <laughs> no beers because then it would be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes to the next level. Joe, you just mentioned that uh, New Zealand's near enough back to normal. We've seen crowds in in sporting arenas there and what have you. I would imagine them that makes it a little bit easy to start to make fights. So, what's your current situation? Where are you at? Uh, so at the moment, I mean, New Zealand's pretty. It's not back to normal yet. I mean, we're getting close. Um, yeah. We're still not allowed to gather in big groups. We're still at level two at the moment. So I think once we get to level one, we can have big crowds. And we're planning on fighting, hopefully, at the end of the year with another fellow New Zealander, Junior Farr. We're just waiting on him and his team to get the contract signed and done. And then we'll, you know, we'll set a date for December. Um, you know, this, I think at the moment, that's the only fight that I, that I can have. You know, yeah. being here in New Zealand and he's ranked number six in the world. I'll love, I'll love to fly over to the UK or the US and fight, you know, Derek Chisora or White or any of those guys. But at the moment, I don't think um, that's in the plans. That, that must be incredibly frustrating for you, mate, because I know we've just spoken about Vegas. You do spend your camps in Vegas and you've built up this fantastic following and reputation and, uh, and profile where, the, where you can travel to various parts of the world to get the biggest fights in this division. So to be kind of locked down and, and that career just to be on, not on hold because you could, like you said, you can have a fight, but uh, the, the super blockbuster fights are kind of just on, just on hold for a short period of time. 
Yeah, it is. It is on hold, but that's not only for me. I mean, there's a lot of other fighters yeah. who want to fight and who are stuck in their own countries and can't travel. So, I mean, everyone's feeling it. And I mean, not only fighters, there's other athletes as well with the Olympics. There's so many things that are on hold because of this virus. So, I'm praying that this goes away, you know, hopefully soon. Well, you know, everyone's praying for it to go away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we've been talking quite a lot about your social media, but have you been keeping up to date with the social media of uh, Alexander Usyk and Derek Chisora? They seem to be having a nice little uh, back and forth there, don't they, uh, in, in preparation for their fight? When is the fight scheduled to be? Because I'm very interested in seeing that fight happen. It's supposed to be October 31st. We haven't got a confirmed date as of yet, but we're led to believe that that is the date that they're work working towards. Who do you have, Ben? I think it's an interesting one. I think if if Derek can set a good enough pace and use his physicality, I think it could be a tough night for Usyk. But I think if it becomes a fight where Usyk's in charge of the tempo and the pace of the fight, and I think it would be a showcase for for Usyk and his skills. But like I say, I think if uh, if Derek has got enough in the tank to to set the pace. I think it really can be an interesting which, fight. Which he really, which we, he really does show, though. He shows that he's got some good gas in the tank to con you know, go continuously chase people down and throw punches. So that's why this fight is very interesting. I think, like you mentioned, it just depends on who's gonna, you know, whether he picks them off and, and boxes them or, um, you know, just sort of puts on a pressure. I think stylistically, for for a heavyweight, stylistically, it's, a, it's the right matchup for Usyk. It's just yeah. if. The phys physical side of things is too much at heavyweight. This fight, if he has a hard time in this fight, I see him really struggling at heavyweight. I can't wait. I want to fight any of those guys. <laughs> this is what this show's about, Joe. This is this is it, to make that noise, to obviously, just to remind everybody what the crack is all about. So you've just mentioned the Chisora, Usyk. Who else is on the Joseph Parker radar? Um, White, White's been on the radar since the, the defeat. Um, we had a good fight. You know, he was a better man on the day. But I've always said that I could, I know what I can do. So hopefully we have a rematch in the future. Um, you know, there's, uh, I want to fight. I don't care who I fight, anyone. You just mentioned you know, you know, You already know fighters will fight anyone. You know, yeah. it's just a matter of it makes sense with the team and all that. But fighters will fight anyone. Did you manage to catch up with Dillian's fight against Povetkin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was uh, that, that saying, hey, that one punch can change any like the whole thing, and that one punch changed the whole fight. He was leading, knocked him down, was doing great work, you know, controlling the fight, and then boom, out of nowhere, that left, you know, the left uppercut, sort of uh, forty-five, caught him right on the chin. Mm. The rematch so that, was, uh, that was interesting. The rematch is happening November twenty-first, which is I think that it works quick. out about it works out about thirteen weeks after that knockout. Is that too quick for you? No, nah, uh, you know fighters will jump in there straight away. Um, what, what, I don't know, is it too quick to be in a ring after knockdown like that? Ben, obviously there's a medical suspension for 28 days, but what do, what would you say, Ben? Pre that knockout was a was a brutal knockout. He was out. Is it too quick to put him back in 13 weeks after that, after the first um, fight? I'm not a doctor, but from, from what I've been led to believe uh, in terms of concussion that if it's, it, it can be like a scab where if you don't let it heal and keep picking it, it, it won't heal properly. Um, so that's that's the the only thing that that's that's uh, worrying me. But on, in the same token, you can only uh, uh, Dillian White said things that I've disagreed with before, you know. And um, but you can only respect the way he's gone about it as a fighter. He took it on the chin, no excuses. Mm. Wants to get back in there. And you can only respect that. In terms of whether it's too soon, you'd hope that he's had the right people around him and the right team and the right um, examinations and, and doctor's advice to, to, to make sure that he's okay in the right time and, and everything will be okay for him to do so. So, yeah. um, fingers crossed. The, the thing is, is that obviously the WBC have come out and said that the mandatory that was in position for the start of next year will be pushed back. So you're probably looking at about another 12 months, which kind of opens it up now. Joseph, for you to to get on in there with, with Dillian, if he can come through his fight with Alexander Povetkin in November and everything kind of plays out in the way that we want it to play out with the pandemic, the first part of next year, we'll see you back over on British soil doing your thing. Please, please make some noise because I would love to be there to fight him. I know he's already there. We message here and there and we, we talk to each other. There's a lot of respect, but I still want to get in the ring and fight him and beat him up. I think Revenge. 
Uh, well, I think a lot of fight fans will want to see it because the first fight was absolutely sensational. Listen, we, just before you go, we've got two British heavyweights here. It's, we're, we're hopefully going to get them in the ring sometime soon. Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois. What do you make of those two guys? I think it's a good fight for both guys. I think it's uh, the, you know, a lot of fighters avoid fighting each other because they want to build, build, build. But these guys are you know, getting in the ring and they'll be fighting very soon, right? The date's already set. Yeah, it's, it's scheduled for the back end of October, but with everything that's going on, with not being able to get fans into arenas, it might be a bit of a struggle. It might get pushed back. Something, is off, something that's often forgot as well. What age did you win the heavyweight championship of the world? Uh, 24, 24 years old. 20, 24 years old, you know, that's very often forgot. Often heavyweights don't hit their peak or their prime or achieve the, their highest heights into early 30s, you know. So I think if Joseph wants to... If he wants to do it, he's got the, and he's got the right mindset, and he's hungry to learn and to develop and push on for more, has goals to achieve more in his career. He can certainly do so. Um, so, depending on that, I do think that there's exciting times to go ahead. And, and of course, the win that he got um, to win that to win that WBO title, upon reflection, yeah. is now a bigger win when you take into consideration who he beat, become a unified <laughs> heavyweight yeah. champion of the world himself. Yeah. The the thing now I, I'm a lot more driven, and I can say that hand on heart. I mean, before I wasn't doing everything right. You know, I was going into fights, and I wasn't taking it as serious as I should. Going in a, a fat, uh, you know, fighter heavyweight and losing weight. Whereas now I'm keeping in shape every single day. So I'm a lot hungrier, and, and like you say, Ben, it is up to me. So I just got to put in the work, have the goals that I have, and um, fight anyone that's in the way to get to the top. Something I often I, I often find with fighters is. The goal is obviously to become a, a, a champion, a world champion, and it's so often that when people achieve that, it's a bit like, where do I go from here? You know, I've achieved what I set myself out to achieve all them years, and it's so mm. difficult I find for fighters to then set a new goal, set another goal, set another goal, and keep striving for more. And I don't, I'm not saying that this is the case, but maybe when you achieve that, I'm not saying this is you. As I say, it could be with anybody that when they achieve that, it's almost like. The, the same intensity is in there. The lifestyle isn't mm. there. Certain things change. But to win it is a tough achievement. To keep maintaining it is <laughs> harder and harder and harder. I know you spent time yourself in, in, a, in a camp with Vladimir Klitschko and he's a perfect example. Yeah. No, you're, you're exactly right. Once we, you know, once, uh, there's a lot of fighters have done it. Once you become champion of the world, what's next? And then all of a sudden you fall into this, uh, you know, I don't have to train as hard or I can go out and celebrate and have fun and then you forget about the, you know, about, the, it's like maintaining, right? Once you're champion, the, the hardest thing is keeping at the top level because everyone's after you. Hmm. And you've got plenty of time. Uh, I think there's something that you can go on, achieve what you've already achieved and go on for more achievements as well. And then acting. Well, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> Heavyweight champion and Oscars. I don't think anybody's done that yet, have they? Well, there's another goal. <laughs> I think it'll be. I think it'll be in a race with Tyson for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Joseph, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to it, mate. Much appreciated. Top Thanks, stuff. Adam. Good, good to see you. Good to see you, Ben. And Joe, see you later. And we'll Top talk later, that. Ben. You all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could pick that conversation up after the show, no doubt. Um, right, let's get into the conversation that I had last week with Dana White, the UFC president. He's been giving his thoughts on the state of boxing. The, the easiest thing to compare, I suppose, mixed martial arts to is the world of boxing. Why do you think the world of boxing has not been able to do the things that you've been able to do over the last six months? The world of boxing hasn't been able to do what I've been able to do over the last 20 years. So it has, you know, so if you if they can't do things... When, when the world is normal, you can't expect them to do things when the world is crazy. Is that why, I mean, the last time we spoke, we spoke about Zuffa quite a lot. And then that kind of, is, I, won't, I don't know if lost momentum is, is the right way of going about it, but what's your thought about that? Have you had a look into the world of boxing and thought to yourself, it's too messed up, I don't want to get involved with that, I'm going to concentrate on what I'm doing? Yep, I, I, I peeked under the hood a lot there for the last, like, year, and 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 ran different things, looked at different things, and it just I said, I don't know, man. This is this is uh I don't know if this is this is fixable. So funny enough, since since the pandemic, I've been looking at other options too. And uh probably have something to announce here soon. In the world of boxing? Yeah. Okay. 
I like the way that you tease it. Listen, man, you, you're dropping news bombs today. You might as well drop Look that. You you know, I haven't told this to anybody else but you. Well, that's that's very nice of you to do that. I appreciate it. I, we, we're going to have to carry on about it because you're obviously coming into the world of boxing at some point. Is that something on your own? Are you teaming up with somebody? Are you are you what are you looking to do? When, when it's time, I'll, I'll I'll let you go. I'll let you know when it's time. I'm not I'm not ready yet, but in the next couple of weeks. Dana White speaking to me um, last week in the build-up to UFC Fight Island. Look who's joined us, Mr. Frank Warren. How are you, sir? You good? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Very well indeed. You're looking well. And obviously, you've just heard uh, Dana speaking there uh, on the World of Boxing. We spoke to him actually recently uh, for your podcast, and you spent quite a lot of time talking to him about the pros and cons of boxing and the UFC. What do you make of his take on the current state of this week's science? Well, I think we're in a what, what statement. We're running shows under very difficult conditions, but we're running shows. We're doing no different than he's doing, both me and other promoters. Um, I don't know what's going on in the States, but I think the shows that we've delivered, and even our opposition, Matram, what they've delivered, I think have been good for the public. So I don't, you know, I can't, I can only say what we've been doing has been quite well received. We've had good ratings uh, for our shows, according to the the rating system I don't trust, but we had um, <laughs> we had good ratings according to them, and uh, you know, I'm pleased. And we got some fighters in great positions, and we got some really big fights coming up. You've been vocal, obviously, during the lockdown about promoters coming together, working together in order to to make the fights that the fans want to see. Is that maybe what Dana's getting at there? Because, uh, as you know, it's, it's a very different business model. UFC, he's one singer, one song. It's a lot more people to obviously negotiate with in the world of boxing, which kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to make the best fights all the time. Well, he's very lucky, Dana, because he does it his way, and that's the only way. You know, there are, he's not dealing with governing bodies. There aren't, there aren't options like you've got in boxing. You know, if you don't want to fight for one governing body, you can fight for another. If you don't want to fight for one promoter, you can fight for another promoter. So the fighters have options. Um, it's a totally different, they're different sports anyway. I mean, totally different sports, obviously and uh, different disciplines. But um, as far as, uh, you know, um, I don't know, I just think, you know, boxing has, boxing will has, and has always been the most popular contact sport. And it always will be. The biggest fight always captures the public imagination. It always does. And it even took for the biggest ever UFC fighters involvement to fight a boxer. And Conor McGregor actually fought a boxer and got beat by, um, as we all know, by um, Mayweather. So for me, boxing is, you know, I'll I'm, I'm, I'm make no secret, you know, boxing is a sport I love and been involved in from a very young age. So for me, it's the, it's the best sport. Of course, there's lots of problems going on in, in boxing, Box, but there's problems going in, in all businesses, all walks of life. That's called competition. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, you have competition is what in some ways makes it healthy because if it was a monopoly, then there may be a problem. And the ones who would suffer, it, well, the two, two groups of people who suffer are the fighters and the public. Has the pandemic actually made people like yourself in the world of promoting just take stock and, and kind of assess those problems even more and therefore maybe speed up the process of trying to bring people together to, in order to make those super fights that all the fans are after, as once obviously the pandemic's gone, that we can do that in 2021? Well, I, I, like a lot of people, had a lot of time on my hands. So I was looking at fights, fantasy fights I'd like to make, you know, involving British fighters. And so I drew up a list, as you know, we put it out there, our mm -hmm. fighters, we, the other side's fighters. And uh, we, I, got, we, I reached out, made a call, we got a call back, and I think it was last week on TalkSport. Um, Eddie Hearn said he, we're going out for lunch at the end of the month, um, which is... I still don't know where that is or when that is, but anyway, that's what he said. And obviously, I'm not some old bird who's sitting here, you know, desperate for a, to meet a bloke, that's for sure. So, but, you know, if we can get together, we'll get together and do what we got to do. Um, and I want to make these fights, and there are a lot of fights. He made an offer to us the other week for another one of our fighters, and he just sent a message back quite simply, yep, very interested in that fight. Let's sit down and discuss it, as we've asked you to do. Because it's not just that fight, there's a few fights. Maybe he'll do some of them, we'll do some of them. We may do some together. Who knows how it'll work out? But the fact of the matter is there's some good fights to be made. But you know what? If they're not made, it ain't the end of the world because we still deliver like we've been delivering. 
in our shows, as you well know on BT, they've been the highest rated shows. So what more can you do? You can only do that. And they weren't going free to air. They were going to the subscribers. No, they have been good. And we've got some other crackers coming up as well. Obviously, Joe Taylor yeah. in action this weekend. We know Liam Williams is back over the next month. Uh, the big one that I want to talk to you about, though, is obviously Joyce uh, Dubois. What is the latest standing with that fight? Well, we've, we've, we've been told now that we're not going to be able to get any... any uh, we can't go on the 24th. We've been told that by the O2. So we're looking at another date. But we're going to make a decision this week as to what we are actually going to do. Because we can't just keep, you know postponing it on whatever people have bought tickets. They're sitting in the box office at the O2 or the various ticket agencies, and they need to know what's going on, as do the two guys. So we're looking at it at the moment. I feel that the fight will go on before the end of the year. Excellent stuff. Does that, is it totally regarding whether you can get people into the O2 or not? Will it happen regardless behind closed doors? That's going to be a big call and a big decision that everybody's going to have to make. You know, that means the boxers, ourselves, sitting around a table and working that one out, because obviously without a gate, the uh, revenue is dramatically different. Yeah. On the big man, on Tyson um, and the Wilder trilogy. We've heard Bob over in the States talking about the possibility of that still going ahead in December because they're looking at the Allegiant Stadium, uh, the big new NFL stadium in Las Vegas. What's the latest with that, Frank? Um, well, at the moment, there's no date set or anything set. Nothing's, nothing's set in actually set, as they say, in stone. At the moment, we're all working towards trying to get the fight, and there's been an interest from another territory, and there are discussions going on, and hopefully we'll have some news soon, because uh, December the 19th in boxing uh, parlance is looming, so we need to get the guys out in training and, and obviously get the thing set up. You just mentioned a moment or two ago about the uh, maybe a possibility of another territory for the uh, Fury Wilder fight. Any clues? It's somewhere in the world. <laughs> Will I need my sun cream? Depends what time of year you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, excellent, excellent stuff. Frank, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you, mate. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. So there you go. Frank Warren joining me a little earlier on in the show to talk about all aspects of boxing that he's uh, got his uh, got his eyes on. Uh, we'll talk about Josh Taylor once again in a moment. But the big news there, Ben, coming out was uh, Dubois Joyce. October 24th was supposed to be the date. We spoke about this with Joseph Parker a moment or two ago. It's not going to happen on that day. It's going to be pushed back. But hopefully it will happen this year. It's a massive fight. The fans are salivating about it. We need to see it, don't we? Yeah, it's a fight that, that we certainly want to see. I mean, like Frank said, it's a difficult one because boxing is a business and... You know, if there is no no crowd there, no gate revenue, um, you know, it can change things. So whether they hold off, wait, whether they get the guys another opponent, uh, there's lots to consider there. And if they do get the guys an opponent, you know, I think it's important that they get the guys the right type of opponent because they're still progressing. Mm -hmm. um, people still want to keep interested in the fight. Um, so... It's, it's a real, real tough one and it's a tough situation that a lot of promoters, a lot of broadcasters and a lot of fighters are in. Mm. Your guy's got the right opponent this weekend. IBF Manatory, Kong Song coming over. Um, out of all the current male British champions that we have, um, Josh Taylor is the first one to defend his, his belt this weekend or belts, should I say, multiple belts, unified champion. Um, again, Ben, lots of fans excited about this. It's a big show on, uh, on BT Sport uh, this weekend. Added pressure because he's the first one of the champs coming out to defend the belts? I think there's always there's always that element of pressure. You know, every fight, and I treat every fight the same. I've always said this, and, and, and it's the truth. Whether it's a four-rounder or, or a world title fight, I want my fighters to win every single fight they're in. So there's always that bit of pressure. Um, you know, I don't want a loss from anybody, whether it's a four-rounder against a journeyman, or a world title fight. And uh, Josh has done a preparation, as I said before, he knows what Kong Song brings to the table. He knows his strengths, he knows his weaknesses, he knows his tendencies. And he's got to go out there and put on a good performance and, and uh, a smart, intelligence performance, smart, intelligent performance before uh, really turning the heat on. How does the rest of your week then now look? Entering bubbles, COVID tests and various things like that. How's it all playing out, mate? Yeah, uh, we'll do a short, sharp boxing session tonight. Um, some active recovery in the morning. 
short, sharp boxing session in the evening. And Wednesday, we'll be heading into the bubble. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, back on the show after a fantastic victory on next uh, on next week's programme. God willing. Absolutely, mate. Listen, thank you so much uh, for your company. I enjoy the week. Looking forward to the action at the weekend. Uh, if you want to come and join us, you're more than welcome to do it. BT Sport this weekend, Saturday night. Josh Taylor in action defending uh, and uh, his, his unified titles against that Pinung Kong Song should be an absolute cracker. We'll catch you next time.